So what do you imagine when someone says, let's go to the seaside? Definitely not a vacation in the desert, right? Well, never say never, because there is a project to make the Sahara Desert a literal resort. Keep watching to find out more. But before you grab those floaties, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification icon to always stay in the know right here on the Bright Side. Now, I'm sure you're aware by now that the Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world. Located in North Africa, its area is a whopping 3.5 million square miles, which is almost the size of the whole United States. Actually, the lower 48 could easily fit into the Sahara with room to spare. We know it to be a scorching hot place where very few life forms can survive, full of sand and more sand. What few people know, however, is that it hasn't always been like that. Every 41,000 years, the Sahara turns into a savanna grassland thanks to the movement of the Earth's axis. Its next change of landscape is going to happen 15,000 years from now. But there is an idea that can make this process not just faster, but different altogether. It's called the Sahara Sea Project. Actually, the Sahara Sea Project has been around for over a century. The first concept appeared in 1877, when Scottish entrepreneur Donald Mackenzie proposed to turn the El Juf Basin of the Sahara Desert into an inland sea. He wanted to dig a channel to direct the water from the actual sea to the basin, flooding the area. The result he was expecting was a vast body of water in the middle of the Sahara. Geologists found that the basin he thought to flood had once been connected to the Atlantic Ocean. The project just remained in the idea stage, though. The following year, two French activists, Francois Elie Roder and Ferdinand de Lesseps, suggested a similar idea for the Shat El Fijiji, another basin in the desert. They wanted to dig a channel from the Mediterranean Sea that would fill the area with water and turn the Sahara into a lush land. Well, supposedly at least. It's interesting that even Jules Verne was fascinated by the idea of creating a sea inside the world's greatest desert. He wrote two adventure novels in 1877 and 1905 that dwelled on the matter and referred directly to Roder and de Lesseps' plan. In his last book, though, the sea was created naturally after a powerful earthquake struck the continent and filled the desert with water. Both of these basins have been chosen because their bottoms are below sea level making them perfect for creating an artificial sea. And both ideas were ultimately rejected because it was later discovered that this, in fact, wasn't true. Instead of a green and lovely landscape the activists had pictured for themselves, chances were that the Sahara would have turned into a huge swamp that would spread disease. A nasty picture indeed. The proposal, however, wasn't lost entirely and people continued thinking of what could be done about that enormous area of sand dunes under the scorching sun. In the 20th century, the idea of turning parts of the desert into a sea was brought up twice more. Both projects rejected yet again. The first of the attempts to return to this issue was made in 1910 by the French professor Edmond Echegoyen. He was sure that an inland sea inside the Sahara would improve the climate in Europe. Sounds pretty selfish, doesn't it? Anyway, although the French government gave Echegoyen's idea some thought, in the end they decided against his proposal. The main reason was that much of the Sahara was actually above sea level, which would make the artificial sea irregular and full of bays and coves. Not to mention, it'd be a lot smaller than Echegoyen had suggested. Plus, the effect on the climate wasn't guaranteed to be a good one. Nobody wants to have a marsh the size of the US somewhere on the planet, you know. Picky picky. It's worth mentioning, though, that engineers in Southern California actually created an artificial lake in 1905. Purely by accident, they released the waters of the Colorado River into a dry basin. The water filled it and made a new salt lake that's now called the Salton Sea. It's become a lot smaller over time since then, but it's still the largest lake in California. If that doesn't count as a success, then I don't know what does. The Sahara Seas Project's second comeback was called on by members of Operation Plowshare. They proposed to blow up several explosives in the middle of the desert to create a basin that would then fill with water. 
You can probably imagine why this idea wasn't well received. The whole concept actually makes your eyes even bigger when you realize the sheer scale of the proposed project. Just think of it. Operation Plowshare suggested that 213 atomic bombs be detonated to make a new channel through the Sahara. Of course, this scared everyone on the African continent and probably beyond, and the project was abandoned for good. And still, there are new plans to develop the Sahara Sea Project. There have been several initiatives in the 21st century, but the most promising one is called the Sea in the Desert. Its idea is to flood Chat el Jarid, one of the shallow salt lakes in southern Tunisia. This would create about 2,300 square miles of artificial sea. That might not sound too grand compared to the projects of the past, but it would help in more ways than one. First of all, such a large body of water in the middle of a desert will definitely affect the surrounding climate and ecosystem. I know, I know. What about that big disease-spreading squishy swamp you mentioned earlier? Glad you were listening! Well, don't forget that technology has come a very long way since the 19th century. These guys today know what they're doing. So the authors of the project strongly believe they can literally make the desert bloom. The main theory is that evaporating waters would trigger rainfall, which, given some time, would make the soil fertile. And that, obviously, would allow plants to grow. Now, this would take a huge amount of work, most of which can only be done by people, not machines. Wouldn't that be a bad thing, you ask? Not at all. You see, Tunisia has a really high unemployment rate, and such a gigantic project would make the country's economy skyrocket by providing jobs for approximately 60,000 people. How cool is that? Here's another benefit to consider. Since Tunisia is a really tourist-oriented country, the creation of an artificial sea in the middle of the Sahara will boost tourism like nothing else. Imagine coming to the desert expecting to see sand and dunes for miles around and finding a seaside resort instead complete with a 5-star hotel, palm trees, and a beautiful beach. Sweet! Yeah, the country's government agrees. And last but not least, the project would kickstart a lot of things in these newly green desert lands. Farming, forestry, fish farming, you name it. As long as it starts with F. The humid climate around the artificial sea would allow locals to farm the lands all year long, making a huge impact on the economy of the country. And yet again, this would create thousands of jobs. It's totally a win-win. And it only gets better. The Sea in the Desert project suggests there will be alternative energy generators installed after the main job is done. This means the whole thing will not only be a positive force in the desert, it'll also bring lots of benefits to the environment. Solar panels on dry land and turbines in the water of the channel will give much-needed green energy to the whole area making it safe and sustainable. So that's the Sahara Sea for you. If we're lucky enough, we'll soon see how the desert we've known as the most formidable body of dry and lifeless land in the world becomes a lush landscape with a whole new sea right in the middle of it. And who knows? Maybe that success will bring a new chain of desert flooding initiatives all over the planet. Well, Brightsiders, would you like to visit a resort in the heart of the Sahara Desert one day? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to always stay on the bright side of life. Yeah.